Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IOS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 13th August 2022. So let's get started with our session without any delay. So what you are going to get after watching this session? So in this session, we are going to see daily one quote and we are going to see editorials of the Hindu and also some other important articles from Hindu. And apart from that Hindu, we are also going to discuss some articles which are very much relevant from our UPSC point of view from even other sources like down to earth, Indian Express, PIB, etc. And we are also going to give you some mains practice questions at the end and even prelims practice questions. And we are also having a focus on vocabulary as well. So today's quote is about Raksha Bandhan. So actually there was a dilemma like so when we have to celebrate this uh, Raksha Bandhan either on 11th or 12th. Actually we celebrated itself on 11th evening itself. Okay. So this Raksha Bandhan which mainly talks about the love. Okay. Love of uh, sister and brothers. Okay. Sky is blue. Feel this who. My love is for you Baya. Always true. So it is talking about the love between sisters and and brothers. So why we need this love? So actually against these girls, especially uh, who are minors. So we are seeing there are a number of rape cases and these pokso cases they are filing, right? So because of this, yes, we need a sense of love and we need just for uh, empowerment of women. Okay. So because of this, even though it is delay, I want to add this quote. So now let us try to see the first topic which appeared in our today's Hindu that is editorial. So this article talking about population control. So moving policy away from policy, population control. So why this population control is in use? So already you know that recently United Nations released one report that is world's population prospects 2022. So because of this is in use, already you might be knowing about the details of this report, right? So there is nothing much I am going to discuss about that a special report but we are focusing on other areas like what is demographic dividend so what are the health risks that we are going to face now and even in the future okay so how our policy should be so these are some important things that we need to focus but not only just on this report okay that is world's population prospects 2022 so this article is important from our society point of view which comes under our gs paper too so now let us try to understand this topic and let us try to extract some important points from this editorial that we can use directly in our mains answers and even in our essay. So if you're talking about this population control, so recently United Nations came up with this report that is United Nations World Prospects 2022 report and you can use this report directly in your introduction. Okay. And whenever you want to give or you want to substantiate your, your argument, so at that time also this report will becomes handy and you have to write the data of this report. So recently United Nations released this world's Pros population prospect report that is in short WPP report 2022 and this report which forecasts about the population and it says that India it is going to become the most populous country in the world by 2023 and India is also going to beat or surpass this China as well and we are going to have population of 140 crore population and we are going to bypass that means we are going to beat this china in the population but i'm not talking about economy or development technology but only in the population that we are going to surpass or that we are going to going to bypass this china and if you're talking about this population so this population is a four times of population that india had okay so it is a four times of population that india had so how much amount of population that we had during our independence that is during one 1947 at that time so when we got independence how much population we have and now in this 2023 we are going to have four times okay 4 into okay into 4 times we have that population in this 2023 right so at that time just 34 crores but now it is 140 crores that we are going to have in 2023 and now if you're talking about the status of this demographic transition now we are in this phase 3 of demographic transition so in this phase 3 what are the important characteristics so important characteristics for the first one is there is slowing of growth so there is slowing of growth because of low constant low mortality and also there is decreasing of fertility so recently here pe uh, periodic labor uh, labor force survey plfs5 said that yes there is decreasing of this fertility rate that is tfr in india it is just 2 okay 2.1 
exactly 2.1 so here earlier so here what is this tfr tfr means nothing but here the childs they are going to give birth by this uh, reproductive age woman so earlier especially in your uh, i think great grandmothers uh, great grandmothers uh, or great grandfathers generation so they used to have 10 child 12 child so even my great grandfather he had 12 children okay even my grandfather he had five children so in the what happened now my mother had less number right so in this way here from generation to generation there is decreasing of this uh, number of children so in that way we can say that tfr which is decreasing and you may got uh, you may have one question so ma'am so here in the earlier generation so if there is a high uh, if there is a high tfr means how that how the population is less when you are comparing to that now so at that time here the death rate were very high okay so even though they are giving birth to 12 child 12 child but they they are having a surviving like five or six okay so because of this high mortality rate at that time so the population was in control but now what happened there is decreasing of low mortality and even now there is a declining of fertility that is seen and if you are talking about india's population so india has 17.5 percentage of world's population and as per the latest world's prospects report of 2022 it says that so india will reach 150 crore by 2030 and 166 crore by 2050 so this data that you have to note in your data point so if you are talking about the different stages of this demographic transition so this is very important and even it is uh, it is one of your static syllabus under your economic geography also so here if you are talking about the stages of this demographic transition we have normally five stages stage one stage two stage three and stage four and stage five so we are at presently stage three so what is a stage one so at this stage one birth rate is also high and death rate is also high so because of this we will be having this type of pyramid and if you see in this stage two birth rate is high and what happened death rate which ra decreased rapidly so because of this there is rapid increasing of population that is seen and now in this third stage here birth rate is falling and as well as here death rate is also falling very much slowly so because of this we can see here we can see there is a stable population at the bottom right and next one here in the stage flow so there is birth rate will be low and here death rate will be low so it will be like this okay bell shaped and here in and here in this uh, fifth stage if you see there is a very very less okay very very less and sometime even we can see negative birth rate and here we can see the death rate will be low and here we can see inverted like this okay so these are the five stages and you have to draw a diagram for this okay so natural increasing of population that is seen at this stage two and now we are at stage three and if you're talking about demographic dividend demographic dividend means we can talk about this working age working age population so whenever there is increasing of percentage of this working age group then compared to of dependent people that may be like older people and that may be like children so this older people and children they are dependent on this middle age group they will be coming under this working age group so whenever there is increasing of working age group that is called as demographic dividend so here in india we are going to enjoy this demographic dividend and larger population in india they are perceived to mean greater human capital so whenever there is high demographic dividend means i can say that there will be like greater human capital so whenever a large amount of population you're working means yes that will leads to the economic growth and whenever there is an income or whenever the for example if you are taking a middle class family so in that family for example let us take a wife and husband and two children so your husband need to work and he need to give the proper essential things for the family so whenever after 20 or 25 years so these children they will be growing up and they will be working right for example if you take the two children so these two children they will be working and they will be providing the needs along with this father right so what happened they will be getting much amount of money they will be getting more income so that that will be increasing the standard of living correct so here whenever we are enjoying this demographic dividend means that will leads to economic growth of the country that will leads to creation of human capital for the country and even that will leads to increasing of standard of living that will finally leads to decreasing of poverty hunger malnutrition correct so in the last seven decades the share 
of working age population has grown from 50 percentage to 65 percentage that may resulting in remarkable decline in the dependency ratio as well and as per this world's prospect population prospects report 2022 so india will have one of the largest working force globally in the next 25 years okay so this is the thing which mainly said by this world's population prospects report but we are facing some obstacles okay to achieve this demographic dividend for example here is so if we are considering this labor force so in this labor force men are working more than this woman okay so there is in some societies there is absence of women especially okay so there is absence of women in the in the labor force so that here what of the contribution that mainly comes from this woman that had been reduced and this one here is quality of education attainments so what are the quality of education that we are seeing in india so that is not meeting the skills okay skills regarding the jobs that are available so because of this there is rising of unemployment and next one here is largest population with one of the world's lowest employment rates is another enormous hurdle in repealing this demographic dividend so here what happened so in our country especially we are seeing there is a low employment rates so it is also one of the hurdles that we are facing in our economy and one more important cause of concern here is our society it is like a male dominant sex ratio so here if you if you see here in india earlier we used to have female feticides now what happened because of banning of uh, revealing the sex during this uh, ultrasound scanning okay ultrasound so here because of that that re reduces the rate of this female feticide so whenever woman she is in pregnant in the fifth month itself if she go for sex determination yes she can know oh she can know the sex of the baby okay either female or male but what happened whenever uh, mother she comes to know about this uh, fetus in her womb is female they are going for killing or abortions so because of this that led to drastical decreasing of sex ratio so what happened government took some steps and government came with a number of uh, programs for the girl child and is also banned revealing of the sex during this ultrasound right so here even why we are going for this female fit set because in our society so we are focusing on sun so we need sun sun preference is high okay we are in patriarchal society right so in 2011 itself if you're talking about the sex ratio it was like 943 943 means nothing but 943 girls are present for thousand males in 2022 and it is going to ex it is going to increase uh, to 950 females per thousand males okay because of number of steps taken by the government and if you're talking about one more cause of concern here is global hunger index so in this global hunger index india's rank is 101 out of this 116 countries okay so even though as we all know that india is a most populous country and we are mainly focusing on number of programs welfare programs like government started providing subsidized food grains under this uh, public distribution system and even government came up with this midday meal scheme okay to provide nutritious food for the children in the schools and even government came up with this Antyodaya Yojana and also government started providing even nutrition through this uh, uh, Anganwadi centers for especially the pregnant and lactating women and even children who are below the five years of age so even though what are the steps taken by the government so the India's ranking is very very low so that shows that there is increasing of hunger in the country and if you're talking about one in more dimensions that we are going to discuss is about serious health crisis or serious health risk. So if you're talking about the disease pattern, yes, recently we, we came up with this COVID-19 and each and every person in this India had suffered with this COVID-19, even the children as well, right? So if you're talking about this after independence, that is in the post-independence, so we came up with a number of non-communicable disease. For example, hypertension, diabetes, liver disease, lung disease, respiratory disorders, etc. So because of this non-communicable diseases, that led to increasing of deaths. Okay, it is like 62 percentage of the total deaths that are mainly seen because of this non-communicable diseases. And if you see data, so India is home to over 8 crore people with diabetes. Okay, and this is one of the important reason for the deaths. And even air pollution is also one of the important cause for the deaths globally and if you're talking about india so india's public health finance is very very low compared to other countries and in uh, india out of pocket expenditure is also very high right so what is the need 
the need here is we should not we should not only focus on this population control but we need to focus on the other areas for example we need to come up with the policy regarding investments in this human capital and we need to focus on whether adults are living with dignity or not there is a standard of living is there or not and we need to focus on especially suitable infrastructure and also proper social welfare schemes that will focus on the education and the health such that we can convert this demographic uh, demographic dividend but if we are not investing in these areas we can see there will be demographic disaster right and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding no holds bad so this article which is talking about recent in designation of some important terrorist right so but here china which is not allowing that so this article is important from your gs paper too and we discussed introduction regarding this topic in our yesterday's lecture so this topic is important from your mains point of view so this article especially focusing on designation of terrorist so by choosing to place a technical hold on joint india us proposal so india and us they came with a joint proposal mainly to designate jaish e mohammed that is j e m deputy chief name here is raf asghar okay raf asghar as a global terrorist on this united nations security council 1267 committee but here china didn't accept it for this so here if you are talking about regarding india and china yes we are having number of areas of cause of concern so first one here is even we went for 16 rounds of military commander level talks between india and china there is no proper resolution of a dispute between this india and china across this line of actual control so there was military stand up that is happening since 2020 april onwards but till now there is no disengagement or no status quo that is seen in this area especially in some focus points and two sides that is from india and china they are also having some issues regarding this maritime sphere this week and we already discussed about this chinese satellite tracking ship at this sri lanka's hamman tota port and at this time also we are seeing there is a bilateral trust deficit also okay so here what happened just two months after beijing that is china similarly stopped the designation of led lashkar e taiba deputy chief that is abdul rahman makki so now let's try to see who is this rauf asghar so why india is having some concern regarding this person so actually he is the brother of this jaish e mohammed chief that is masood asghar and he was an important personality who planned this is ic 814 hijacking and even he involved in this parliamentary attacks and pulwama attacks recently held okay and he also organizing some training camps fundraising drives and also is coordinating coordinating with this elite that is sashkari taiba as well okay so because of this india is very much uh, having some fear regarding this person and they want to designate this person as a global terrorist under this united nations security council list so here why it is important so india it is mainly focusing or india it is making some attempts to designate this makki and as plus well asghar as global terrorist because these are the two important people they are responsible for the number of attacks in india and if you are talking about what are the options that are present before india so here chinese which is stopping this move right so what are the options that are present for india so this article is talked about three important options so first option here is so we need to keep international pressure okay so we need to keep international pressure such that we can designate them as global terrorist and next one here is so we need to work on changing of this united nations security council that is 1267 committee procedures okay and next one here is we may also come up with open dialogues with these countries like china and pakistan where they are uh, where they are stopping us to designate them as a global terrorist and we need to even uh, try to remove this fatf gray list later in this area okay and we need to ensure the listing that should be accomplished okay so these are the three more options that are present before india to designate this person as a global terrorist and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding avoid unilateral action to alter taiwan status quo so if you see this image there is one infographic which mainly talks about what is happening so recent us house speaker visit to this taiwan happened right so because of this chinese which mainly showed a strong opposition that thing you know right so china begins military military drills on august 4th in the sixth region which is present around this taiwan and this one here is chinese vessel and jets cross this uh, across this maiden line of taiwan strait and the missiles they fly over the taiwan so because of this it is mainly threatening this taiwan and it's when here is taiwan also launches its own military exercises after china wraps up 
uh, these five drills so after trying is done the drills yes Taiwan says I am not the weak I am also very much strong and they also did some retaliated retaliated uh, launches okay so this is about the thing that is going on so now let us try to see why it is important and what we have to learn from this topic so India which called for restraint it is it is not involving in this over this Taiwan and India also cautioned against any unilateral action to change the status quo while maintaining its position on this one China policy has been well known and consistent and does not need any retaliation. So let me know what is this one China policy already I discussed in our earlier lectures. So let me know what is this one China policy in the comment box. So please try to make this session interactive and what are the questions I am asking. So please I am hoping that the answer will be there in the comment box. So don't discourage me okay. So try to give your answer in this comment box. And if you are talking about some details mainly says that. So India says that like many other countries India is also concerned regarding this recent developments are happening regarding this uh, China and Taiwan. So we are also we are also focusing on the exercises. So those exercises need to be restrained and we need to go for avoidance of unilateral actions. Okay. So this is the thing which mainly said by India. And now let us try to see next topic it is regarding retail inflation. So this inflation means nothing but there is increasing of price of goods and services in the market. So this inflation we can see two types of inflation. First one is wholesale price inflation. Second one is retail price inflation. So wholesale price means at the wholesaler level. So what is the rate of increasing of prices and retail price means at the consumer level. So what is increasing of prices that is seen in the market. So this is the difference between this WPI, WPI and as well as CPI. So this topic is important from our economy point of view which comes in our GS paper 3. So now let us try to see this topic in detail. So if you see context it mainly says that India's retail price inflation or retail inflation slipped below 7 percentage mark for the first time since April. So since April onwards now in this month we can see there is decreasing of retail inflation and it is now 6.71 percentage in the month of July. Okay, so if you see some details it mainly says that so this is seventh month in the row so which is high. Okay, so here actually the limit of maintenance of this inflation here is 4 plus or minus 2 percentage that is from 2 to 6 percentage but from last 7 months onwards if you see inflation which is more than this 6 percentage. So this is the thing which mainly said here. So while inflation that is mainly seen in the edible oils for example the gold drop sunflower oil we use in our house it is like more than 179 rupees and here meat prices also increased but I think uh, the chicken price had been decreased earlier it used to be like 300 but now it is like 180 or 190 so i think because of impact of the stamina mass right and next one is fish price okay especially if you see in the markets you will be getting fish price of 100 rupees or 120 rupees per kg and if you're going to any reservoir okay there the fish price will be high and if you see vegetable price it is a very very high yesterday itself i went to market and i found rich car price here just for 250 grams it is 40 rupees and tomato price had been decreased for 2 kgs it is just 30 rupees okay so here vegetables prices had been some prices had been increased and some prices had been decreased except especially tomato price had been decreased and remaining oil prices are soaring at high and here because of this increasing of price of edible oil meat fish and vegetables that led to this retail inflation and if you're talking about this rural inflation that is inflation in these rural areas it eased from 7.09 percentage to 6.8 percentage in this July. So if we are talking about some facts regarding the CPI that is consumer price index. So actually at this retail prices okay of goods and services. So whenever there is rate of inflation that is measured in this retail price inflation or CPI. So this CPI which tracks the changes in the retail price of goods and services and CPI also helps to understand the real value of salaries, wages, pensions, purchasing power, etc. Okay, so this is the formula that you can go through this once. And now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding 25 elephants poaching cases in three years. So actually, why this is the data released by this Ministry of Environment and Forest Change regarding this elephant poaching? So because of this August 12th, we celebrate as a World's Elephant Day. So because of this, this is the news. So in past three and onwards, so in past three years onwards, so 90 cases of the seizure of elephant tusk ivory had been reported in India. And so from past three years, 
so 90 cases of uh, tusk and as well as um, ivory had been reported and also 29 cases of this elephant's poaching poaching means killing of elephants illegally so this data shared by ministry of environment and forest uh, environment forest and climate change so whenever government is releasing that data that will be authenticated data okay so many students they will be asking like so which data that you have to include so whenever our ministries are releasing the data that will be authenticated data so you can use that data so if we're talking about details regarding the number of poaching so highest number of elephant tusk season reported in this uh, 2021 so what is this tusk so this is a trunk of elephant and here we can see the tusk will be there that is white, white color so they are made up of ivory and they will be having a huge demand so for that ivory itself that is for their tusk they had been killed actually so the largest number of cases of elephant tusk caesar was reported in this 2021 and there are about 42 cases at a when incidents of poaching they were highest in the year 2021 and with 14 accidents that had been reported and if you're talking about megalia so megalia which is accounted for the seven out of this 14 poaching deaths so here you know, this uh, which mainly emerged as a as a hot spot for this uh, human elephant conflict and it also accounted for this poaching etc so these are some important details and if you're talking about the threats for this elephants or oh, the first one is poaching that is illegal killing next one is habitat loss whenever we are going for development that will also leads to habitat loss and human elephant conflict is one of the one of the cause and this one is mistreating the captivity mistreatment in the captivity that is at the conservation sites and abuse due to elephant tourism and uh, next one is rampant mining and as well as corridor destruction so these are some important reasons for the uh, weather decreasing of number of elephants and if you're talking about this world elephant day 2022 so it is observed every year on this 12th of august and why we are celebrating this world's elephant day to raise awareness about the conservation of elephants uh, we are celebrating this day here especially to raise awareness so we're talking about what is significance of celebrating this uh, world's elephant's day so world's elephant's day which commemorated to raise awareness about the significance of this elephants and we are talking about this elephants because they play an important role in maintenance of healthy ecosystem and as well as proper diet biodiversity and these elephants are considered to have the biggest brains and what is the aims and objectives of celebrating this day especially we need to improve the protection of for this wildlife or uh, wild elephants and we need to en we need to improve enforcement policies and we need to provide prevent this illegal poaching and trading of ivory and conserving of habitat of elephants and captive elephants they should be provided better treatment okay so these are some important things regarding this world's elephant day so i want to make a small announcement we and rathors as we came up with this prelims test series 2023 and here we are providing 30 tests including GS and as well as CSAT. So this course is absolutely beneficial and is one year course. And we will be giving you a detailed schedule. So that schedule is given in the description box. And you can download that and you can see how this test series which is going to happen. And the cost of this test series is just 3000 rupees for one year. And this is a very very accessible and affordable. So try to join this course. Okay and if you have any doubts so please call me on this number. 8074765513 and now let us see some more important articles that appeared in other sources title says how did continents form giant meteorite impacts could be responsible say study so this article talking about formation of continents i think if you have gone through your ncrt static syllabus there we said about different types of theories for example plate tectonic theory continental drift theory right right so till now we believe that because of this plate tectonics theory that led to formation of continents and oceans but now this article says that it is because of meteorite impact that led to formation of continents so here yeah, we are going to understand this actually this article i found interesting and it is also very much relevant from our upsc point of view and i collected this article from the down to earth so now let us try to understand this topic and let me try to explain this topic in detail as a geography faculty i have good command on this plate tectonics theory so now let us try to say context here so context here is according to recent study and this study published in nature so this study which says that its continent they were formed by massive meteorite impact so what is meteoroid meteorite and meteoroid okay so let me know the difference between three three words already i discussed number of the meteor meteorite and meteorite okay three words 
meteor meteorite and meteoroid so it is talking about meteorite okay so because of this massive meteorite impact that led to formation of continents okay actually these meteorites they used to fall on this earth actually they were very much frequent and they were prevalent during this first billion years of our planet planets four and half year billion billion year history so in this four and a half year billion years so there was usually there was a meteorite impact and because of this impact that led to formation of continents and the theory that says that giant meteorite impacts they formed the continents okay and meteorite impact they generated massive energy to form oceanic plates which later evolved into continent so whenever these meteorites they are coming and they are hitting the earth surface they are mainly generating massive energy and because of this energy they are forming this oceanic plate and after those they after some years of after some billion of years that oceanic plates that convert into continents so this is the new theory so now let us try to understand the current theory so current theory here is mostly accepted theory here is plate tectonics theory so we have different plates for example we have minor plates we have major plates so let me know the examples of some major plates not minor plates okay some major plates and also some especially some minor plates for example nazca plate so where it is located and you have to see those locations of those plates especially this minor plates okay so especially the current theory says that we are believing that because of this plate tectonics theory that led to the formation of continents okay so plates they will be moving and because of this plates whenever they are moving towards each other whenever they are sliding towards each other or uh, whenever they are moving away from each other that is led to the formation of some landforms right so if we are talking about why we are saying that because of this meteorite there was formation of land, continents so what are the evidences yes you will be asking about me what are the evidences what is the proof right so the proof here is zircon crystals zircon crystals of this pilbara craton okay so there are some zircon crystals so researchers they looked for the evidence of the zircon crystals and these are present in this pilbara craton that is located in the western australia region and this craton is a remnant of an ancient crust and that began forming more than 3 billion years ago so whenever they were going for the studying of this craton region they found yes there were some zircon crystals okay and the study uh, came up with the composition of icoxin isotopes in these zircon crystals and they revealed that drop down process they mainly started with the melting of rocks near the surface and progressing deeper consistent and geographical effect on the giant meteorite impacts so actually they recovered this zircon crystals and they heated them and by heated them yes they found that there is some geological effect that is mainly happened due to this meteorite impact and what are the zircons first of all so these zircons they are formed by this crystallization of magma okay and they are mainly found in metamorphic rocks so we're talking about different types of rock we have three types igneous rocks sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks and to understand this you have to know about this rock cycle so this rock cycle is one of the important topic in your ncerts of geography right so i am going not going to explain that in this rock cycle i will be talking about in the tomorrow's lecture okay so where is this location it is located that is here in this uh, pilbara crater which is located in this northwestern part of this australia and if you are talking about to understand what is impact of this meteorite so whenever this meteorite which is coming okay which is coming and which is hitting on the earth surface that will leads to melting and ejected and the some amount will be converted into vapor so after once the heat is happen so what happens so there will be the uh, there will be central uplift upliftment which happens and because of the central upliftment that will leads to formation of some landforms and here we can see there will be the some falls so here one main question i want to give here is continental drift theory was initially ridiculed but it paved a way for the plate tectonics to explain how earth continents move elaborate so this uh, question it is mainly based on the static syllabus so try to answer this question and next topic it is regarding nato so what is the significance of india talks with nato so this article is exclusively important from your international relations which comes under your gs paper 2 and this topic is imported from your mains so now let us try to see this topic in detail so your context says nato is important due to russia ukraine issue and talks for the expansion of nato which is happening right so we're talking about india nato engagement so india held its first political dialogue with 
North Atlantic Treaty Organization that is India came up with the first political dialogue with NATO in Brussels on December 12, 2019. And the important aim of this uh, this here is especially we need a proper cooperation the regional and as well as global issues of mutual interest and especially we are focusing on regional and as well as global issues of national interest okay regarding because of this india came up with a political dialogue with nato for the first time in the year 2019 and what are the significance of this india talks with this nato so first one here is nato's engagement with the pakistan and china so actually we know that india it is rivalry of both china and pakistan now so india's talks with the nato which is very much important because here this North Atlantic Alliance will have been engaging with both China and Pakistan in the bilateral dialogues. Okay, and it will be also helpful for the India, especially for the military level st uh, staff talks also. And it will be helpful to balance NATO's perception. So when we are engaging with the NATO in a political dialogue, so that will provide India an opportunity to bring about balance in the NATO's perceptions about the situations and as well as about the issues which are of course of concern for India. And we can also focus on maritime security as well, right? So this maritime security is one of the important and the principal area of con uh, conversation even in the future as well. So if you're talking about the countries which are part of this NATO, so this blue color countries are part of NATO. So let me know recent two countries joined the NATO, so which are those countries in the comment box. And one more main question for you students that is the USA is facing USA is facing an existential threat in the form of China which is much more challenging than the erstwhile Soviet Union explain. So try to write answer for this question and actually this question which appeared in our UPSC 2021 mains. And next topic is regarding one initiative that is SMILE initiative social justice ministry launches SMILE initiative SMILE 75 initiative. So this article is important from your GS paper to under policy and programs and as well as uh, policy programs and, uh, uh, and schemes of government, okay, policy programs and schemes of gov government. So this topic is very important from your GS paper to some. Now let us try to see this topic. Actually, I think I'm so fast today, okay, right? Actually, the reason behind this is actually I'm running out of time. Uh, because actually near our institute near our regarding room so there is one some construction work is happening and because of that uh, we are having some disturbances i think you may hear some noise background noise so please try to ignore them okay so because of that i want to complete this lecture as soon as possible without leaving anything so that i'm going fast okay so from tomorrow onwards i will be going with a normal speed don't worry about that so please try to focus and if you're uh, feeling that I'm going too fast, so in the settings you can decrease the speed, okay. So now let us try to see the context here. The Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment launched this scheme that is the SMILE 75 initiative. So you can get a question like, so recently SMILE 75 is seen in use. So here which ministry came up with this? So your SMILE 75 initiative came up with this Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. So now let us try to see some details regarding this SMILE. So what is this SMILE? So what is the abbreviation of this SMILE? So SMILE stands for Support for Marginalized Individuals for Livelihood and Enterprise Scheme. Okay, it is Support for Marginalized Individuals for Livelihood and Enterprise Scheme. And it aimed for making cities or towns and municipal areas begging free. So they were focusing on beggars and they want to make those areas which are begging free. And they want to come up with a comprehensive rehabilitation of persons who are engaged in the act of begging. Okay. So if you see in the cities, especially in the traffic signals, yes, you can see number of beggars, they will be coming and they will be begging, right? So especially there will be some, sometimes a small children like... Uh, and even sometimes you can see the very old people. So yes, we have to rehabilitate those old people, right? So here this SMILE program, which is focusing on this marginalized individual for livelihood and enterprise scheme. And they want to make cities and towns and municipal areas. They should be begging free. And to make them begging free, yes, we have to go for comprehensive rehabilitation of these persons. Under this initiative, 75 municipal corporations in collaborations with NGOs and other stakeholders, they will cover several comprehensive welfare measures for persons who are engaged in the act of begging. So here, if you are talking about this initiative, so why it is 75? 75 because 75 municipal corporations in collaboration along with NGOs and even other stakeholders are involved and they are covering several comprehensive welfare measures. 
for these people who are involved in this act of begging and what are the measures they are taking for example rehabilitation for example they have the provision of medical facilities for these elderly people and they are also focusing on counseling especially if they are very good and they are able to do some other works whenever they are involved in this act of begging so they will be also done some counseling and awareness so even for the children who are involved in this act of begging they will be getting some proper education and skill development economic linkages etc and if you're talking about the beggars in india so what is the date of beggars in india so according to census 2011 total number of beggars in india it is like over 4 lakhs now you can imagine so 4 lakhs of beggars are present in india so west bengal which mainly tops this okay list and up is the second and you have to see your state rank so that will be important from your interview point of view and let me know you are you are from which state and rank of your state in this beggars and the legal status here is there is no proper central law on begging okay and actually states they have adopted bombay prevention of begging act of 1959 which penalizes this beggary be, uh, okay beggary so this article is very important and try to focus on this and try to make a data and let me know in which which rank your state stands and now let us try to see the practice questions of prelims so first one here is which of the following reports are published by ilo so first one is world social protection report world's wage report global hunger index and this one is a uh, world's employment and social outlook so actually this global hunger index is not released by this ilo and let me know which organization released this global hunger index so i discussed number of times right so correct option is b1 uh, uh, sorry b uh, correct option is a 1 2 and 4 it is not the global hunger index and next here is the question which ha which occur which appeared in this 2013th upsc prelims that is consider the following statements or following that is electromagnetic radiation geothermal energy gravitational forces uh, plate movements rotation of earth revolution of earth so which of the above are responsible for bringing dynamic changes on the surface of the earth so all these 1 2 3 4 5 6 they have some impact on the they will bringing some changes on the surface of the earth option here is d is a correct answer and now let's try to see topic of the day so in this topic of the day we are going to talk about this plate tectonics as we know that in this plate tectonics we will be having different types of plates that is major plates and minor plates so these plates are made up of upper layer that is crust plus lithosphere right so here it is consist of this lithosphere right so here we have three types of movements that is divergent so divergent means the plates are moving moving away from each other convergent means they will be moving towards each other and transform means they will be sliding over one over the other so whenever they are moving e away from each other so if you take this is the plate and whenever they are moving away from each other so that will leads to formation of a crack and this crack will be deepens and like finally that will leads to formation of linear sea and as well as ocean so if you see the convergent boundaries so this plate is coming towards and this plate is coming towards so heavier plate that will be submerged under this light and under this uh, lighter plate and because of this radioactivity because of this increasing of temperature and pressure so this will be melting and this will be led to the formation of the mountains on this lighter plate okay so these are the land forms that mainly formed because of this plate tectonics so the plate movements and now let us try to focus on this vocabulary also so first word here is daunting daunting means difficult seeming difficult to deal with its so and so okay next one is swung swung means move by grasping a support from below and leaping so we are moving with this support and this one here is spurred spurred means fight with feet or spurs and leverage leverage means we have to exert some force so these are the four words for the vocabulary of the today and now i want to make a small announcement we in rathor says we came up with this complete foundational course for this 2023 and 2024 and we are providing two years of uh, validity for this course and we are providing like more than 600 hours of video classes and along with live class will be there on every sunday and if you join this entire foundation course you will be getting one year prelim test series and as class well one year mains uncertain course which is a free of cost that means you are getting some bonus also so the cost here is now you can avail you can avail this uh, foundation course with a discount price of just 49000 rupees with a validity of 2 years and you will be having live classes also on every sunday so try to join this course and if you want to get some installment so we are we can all we are also ready to provide you with the installment as well so if you have any doubts regarding this course you can call me on this number 8074765513 okay so now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf 
so this is our today's hindu so first article it is about avoid unilateral action avoid unilateral action to alter taiwan status quo says india so i discussed this topic right and you have to see the map so i want to give you one homework you have to see the map here and next topic is about retail inflation i discussed this topic and if you move forward here there is a one article regarding this baby powder so here johnson and johnson i think you have you might have seen this johnson and johnson and the and the perfume that is i can say the smell of this powder is absolutely very good than compared to of any products actually they are using talc here so but now here johnson and johnson they want to Uh, they want to move from uh, talc to towards uh, corn starch because there is decreasing of sales of this johnson and johnson baby powder so because of this they want to move from the talc based powder towards this corn starch based powder and next stop here it is regarding ammonia water level crosses danger mark so here 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 you have to know about uh, some facts regarding this ammonia river and tributaries and where it had been originated and if if there are any dams you have to focus on the dams also so that will be important and if you move forward in this page number 4 here you can see 75 vande bharat express trains to be rolled out of this icf so here you have to know about some facts regarding this vande bharat express that's it and here in this uh, page number 5 you can see central to file review petition on eco sensitive zones so here you have to focus on what is eco sensitive zones and recently we discussed about some issue regarding this eco sensitive zones also right and if you move forward here you can see one image that is uh, on 12th august they are celebrating this world elephant day and here you can see one more important article that is ongol breed so actually there is one movie in telugu that is uh, ongol gitte uh, so here that much famous i can say that much famous this ongol breed of cattle so they will be giving huge amount of milk okay so you have to know about what are the specialities of this uh, ongol breed of cattle and in this editorial page i discussed about this uh, no holds barred and i discussed about this population control article and there is one article i left for you here for the discussion is a never ending fight so this article it is about free speech okay and if you move forward in this page number 8 you can see electricity bill problematic so i already discussed about the provision of this electricity bill and you have to revise this topic once and here there is one more article that is global instability posing challenge to national security so this article is very important from your gs paper 3 under internal security so please try to go through this article once and if you move over here you can see india nato in touch for quite some time so i discuss this topic and in this 20 uh, uh, and in this 10th page you can see about 20 uh, elephants poaching so i discuss this topic and there is one article regarding this essential commodities act so let me know how many people they, they remember about this essential commodities act so already we discussed i think one year ago regarding this topic right so if you don't know about this topic let me know and in the tomorrow's lecture we are going to discuss about this what is essential commodities act and if you move forward in this world space here you can see us indonesia hold military deals so this topic is very important because there is increased uh, uh, increased focus in this indo pacific region and in this business page there is article regarding industrial output growth slow that is iip so already i discussed this topic number of times so these are some important articles that appear in our today's hindu newspaper so if you really like this video hit the like button and you can also share this video for your friends also and one more thing here is if you are new to our channel rathor science academy so hit the bell icon and as well subscribe to our channel so that you will be getting regular notifications whenever we are uploading the video without any delay and if you want to get the pdf of this class you can join the telegram channel link is given in the description box so by this i'm concluding thank you so much and have a nice day